Molly waited a long time to join the Gibson family, about 28 years. At just over one month old, she's already made history simply by being born. She knows what a miracle she is, and anybody that's around us knows as well because we're okay with sharing it. The embryo that grew into Molly was frozen on October 14, 1992, but she wasn't born until October 26, 2020. According to researchers at the University of Tennessee Preston Medical Library, her birth sets a new record for the longest frozen embryo to come to birth. But setting records is nothing new in the Gibson family. This is our first daughter, Emma Wren. You want to say hi? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> she just turned three last week. Big sister Emma Wren once held the title for the longest frozen embryo when she was born, after a more than 24-year deep freeze. This is Daddy, and this is Mommy. <laughs> ben and Tina Gibson learned about embryo adoption from Tina's parents. They'd had their hearts set on a traditional adoption, where the children have already been born, but something about this newer path to parenthood stuck out in their minds. We just decided to give embryo adoption a, a chance, you know, and um, we're so glad we did. <laughs> you know, it really, it's really been a miracle in our family. The National Embryo Donation Center, where the Gibson started their family, explains embryo adoption is neither legally or technically an adoption. It is covered by contract ownership law and not adoption law. Basically what it is, is people that have chosen to go through IVF they have embryos left over, so it means that either they've not used them, they've not used them all, they've had pregnancies and maybe don't want any more kids. So they have a chance to do several different things with their embryos. They can donate them to science, they can freeze them inevitably. Or destroy them. Or destroy them. For the couples who have embryos frozen that have completed their family, this is a great option and they can donate where there's no contact between them and the receiving couple or where there is contact and the level of that contact is determined by them. Taking in an embryo that hasn't completed 40 weeks of gestation gives these parents an experience most adoptive parents never have. They get to experience that joy of of being pregnant and giving birth. I got to experience pregnancy. Um, I got to experience birthing my children. You know, I got to experience breastfeeding both of my children. Those are things that I never would have been able to do. Senior embryologist Dr. Carol Sommerfeld is the lab director for the National Embryo Donation Center and is the person who thawed the embryo that became Molly. She says more and more families like the Gibsons are turning to embryo adoption. This year we're on course to do well over 200 embryo transfers with donated embryos. And that's grown exponentially since we first started in 2003. Dr. Sommerfeld says this about whether prospective parents should be concerned about the age of an embryo. As long as they're maintained correctly in liquid nitrogen, we feel that they may be good indefinitely. Two healthy little babies born to the Gibsons speaks to that. Now that Molly and Emma Wren's births are in the record books, the Gibson family is going to spend the holiday season as a family of four. The best Christmas gift ever! <laughs> For Inside Edition Digital, I'm T.C. Newman.